Now, of course, hopefully the fact that this was called a bad malloc vulnerability tipped you off that probably the vulnerability was in the malloc. But of course, finding the flaw was entirely dependent upon your capability to go with the acid flow. So let's look at that now. All right, so I gave you, you know, here's the, the contents at the beginning. We've got the tar file that's received over the network. We've got the size of the tar file that's received over the network. So the size is semi-tar controlled because, you know, they can control, you know, what stuff gets put into that. And that can, you know, slightly modify the size. But it's not something like the size is just from a header that allows an attacker to specify an arbitrary value, as is the case with this SIG file size. So ultimately, these values, like the SIG file size, are passed into the get entire file. And the idea is you've got to read the entire contents of the file before you can, for instance, you know, hash it in order to verify a digital signature. So all of this content passed into get entire file. Get entire file looks like this. We've got our semi-attacker controlled size. That's corrupting that. Then we've got our fully attacker controlled file size compared to the total received buffer, that's the value coming over the network. And if this value that was received right now is less than the total size according to the headers, that means that you must have only got a portion of the content. And therefore, it's going to, as it says in the comments, allocate a buffer in the size of the entire file, so this attacker controlled file size, and then fill in the chunks as they come in over the network. Well, we pass that file size into the malloc, and that is clearly acid math right there. We've got a file size plus one. So if that was, for instance, the maximum file size of all Fs in 32-bit size, then that could clearly overflow to become something like a zero. If we could allocate a zero size thing, then that would definitely be undersized, which would allow us to overcopy. So we go into malloc and we imagine that, for instance, we used that integer overflow outside of the malloc and we overflowed, we get zero, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon your perspective, this code properly checks for size equals zero. So great, they just say no to zero. I like it, good stuff. Well, now what if the attacker instead passed in one less? So they had FFFFE, in the code before this and that plus one up to all Fs. Well, then of course that is not equal to zero. So it goes along and it passes all Fs plus size of header into this PV port malloc. Well, what is that? That's acid math. That's as bad as an acid math. And indeed that will lead to an integer overflow. And so all Fs plus four, which is the size of the header, will overflow and lead to a under allocation. We seem to be setting ourselves up for a classic under allocate over copy. So the packet's allocation is checked to make sure that it actually succeeded in allocating. That packet buffer, which is undersized, is passed in and put as a value in the header. And the size, once again, uses the exact same integer overflow in order to put the size of that buffer into the header. So it's not even the base of the packet that's actually handed back out. It's packet plus one, and that packet is a header pointer type, so it's going to skip forward by the size of the header in order to return the buffer after that. So back up here in the get entire file, we just passed a large FFFE into that, plus one, got FFFF, and we had an under allocation of this size of three buffer, right? And beyond that, the fact that it, you know, step forward by the size of the header means that effectively this thing is pretty much, you know, guaranteed to be pointing out of bounds at this point. So continuing on, oh, there it is. It's a mem copy. Well, looks like we're cruising for a bruising because we've got the attacker controlled length, attacker controlled content being mem copied into an under allocated buffer. This is our classic under allocation over copy. And here we can see that although there was a integer overflow available up at this level of the code, that was not actually useful to an attacker because this malloc just says no to null. And consequently, the actual vulnerability here comes directly from the malloc implementation itself. The fact that it will un overflow and under allocate inside of the malloc in a way that you wouldn't even be able to see back here if you hadn't stepped in. Malloc. I shake my fist at the... But guess what? There's even more integer overflows and bad malloc 
some nonsense going on in this code because although the TI implementation of the malloc has its own little injure overflow right there, it calls into PV port malloc, which turns out to be a malloc from free RTOS. So PV port malloc, assume that this is some extremely large value like all Fs being passed in there. So again, the attacker just, you know, made the size slightly less and then, you know, passes in a, a giant value to here and we get more overflows. So here's all of the flow of that acid and that right there looks like some acid math and that right there looks like some acid math. So here we go, a couple more acid baths for you where the attacker passing in some value, even if the things are you know fixed up and they check for an integer overflow up in the you know enclosing malloc, still behind the scenes, you know, if they allow a size that's close to an integer overflowable type size, well, PV port malloc will happily integer overflow. So what was the fix for this? Let's look at the TI code first. So the malloc, they introduced a new variable, alloc size, and alloc size was set to the size plus size of header. That was the value that previously was passed directly into PV port malloc. And so they do the acid math there, and then they add a sanity check here. So previously the only sanity check was for a size of zero, and now the sanity check is, is this alloc size less than the size that came in? Now, this is a size T, so that's an unsigned, maximally sized value according to the architecture, so that's good. And while this is technically correct in the sense of, you know, an unsigned value, and if you do the acid math, and if there's an integer overflow, then the overflowed value should be less than the unoverflowed value, the value pre-math. It's technically correct, and it's technically safe, but as you're going to learn about in the next module, doing this kind of sanity check is extremely perilous if you ever use anything like a signed size in your code. So we'll teach you in the next module why you want to do safe math, but uh, haven't learned about that yet, so we'll continue on. Then what was the fix for the free RTOS? And it takes the same general form, and it was, again, a size T, so it was an unsigned value, and that's good. And again, it was, you know, just basically allow the overflow to happen and then check whether or not the this value right here, if it's less than the value that it started out in, it's not going to go into that if, and if it's greater than, okay, you're allowed to continue on to this. So again, it's technically correct, and you know it's okay, but like I say, it's perilous, and you'll learn why in the next section. Now, once I was digging into all of these things to show you the diffs and stuff like that, I, I said originally the disclosure covered all sorts of different IoT stuff, and so I literally just clicked in the first one and said, you know, okay, what was the fix for that? Looked at the Amazon free RTOS, looked at the commit log, and saw this great little nugget. This PR improves the heap to bounds checking. There was a mostly theoretical case where an overflow could occur if the size of the requested block is between blah and blah. Mostly theoretical, right? Mostly theoretical. Well, my eyeballs rolled so hard, they nearly fell out of my head. So if you're in this class, hopefully you've already learned quite enough to not be that guy or that gal, right? You know at this point in this class that uh, these sort of quote-unquote theoretical issues are more often than not exploitable. And therefore, it's always easier to just fix the vulnerability than debate whether or not this could actually be used by real attackers in the wild. Because as we've shown in this class, exploitation is just another engineering skill set. And just because you can't see how it could be exploited doesn't mean it can't be exploited.